Good morning, wrestling fans. Welcome to PWR today for Monday morning, September 26, 2022. The man they call me that, the lovely Linda Kay, the Road Warrior, is back at it again with her big time travels down to OV Dub. Yes, yeah, so made a quick trip down and back, but man, it was quite the show there at Redemption. Yeah, you know, uh, we got a kid that wears a fanny pack, uh, you know, the kid of the fanny pack, the fanny pack kid. He was in a six-man elimination tag match, right? But, I mean, yeah. if you would look at the results and the way things went down, it looked like it was a three-on-one. Yeah, so, hey, our friend, our pal, Cal Hero, stuck it through at the very end where two of his tag partners were eliminated, eliminated and it became a, a three-on-one. But yeah. just right there toward the end, one by one by one, he eliminated the rest of the opposing team. And I proudly got to say... Your winner and sole survivor of the match. <laughs> Cal That's right. He's the Beyonce Hero. of PWR. Ah, I see. Yeah, but he won it for the team. That was awesome, but great effort by everybody. And uh, yeah, so came out strong. Kudos there to Cal Hero. And I should be caught some of the other parts of the show. But if anybody that missed it, you can always catch the replay. And it is a free replay. It was one of our. Uh, TV specials during the week. You can go to Fight TV, watch it back, get caught up, and see what happens on our road to our next pay per view. This time it is going to be on a Saturday night, and ironically, on my birthday in October. Oh, um, does OVW know that? A few people do. I, I did happen to mention it, but that'll be coming up on October 29th. So just stay tuned. And again, you can catch OVW live every Thursday night, Fight TV, 6 p.m. Central, 7 p.m. Eastern. And Check it out. See our friend Cal Hero, former senior intern Cal Hero, that is, um, with that huge victory this past Thursday night. The kid with the fanny pack blown up down in OVW. I know that there's big shows coming up back in the uh, Milwaukee area, too, uh, that we'll be getting to over the next few weeks. But <coughs> Linda Kay, the, the wrestling world uh, was buzzing. And, uh, you know, the buzzards were kind of flying around for last week Friday's SmackDown. Now, we didn't have the uh, Eater of Worlds show up on Friday night, but we got more, basically more clues, more hints, more mystery on the QR code that popped up in SmackDown. Did you see it? You know, it took me a minute to catch it, but I know there's the uh, QR code popped up during that Hit Row party. In hit that. Row. Yes. There was more of a reason for that party. It wasn't just... A celebration they were throwing in back there was that purpose because i too would made sure to tune in and i was like i can't miss what happens at 9 23 eastern or 8 23 central <laughs> to see what would happen and instead we got more clues but um it does lead to a locale a location on where said event takes place tonight for WWE. yeah that's right so do we see them tonight or do we get another clue we go deeper down the rabbit hole see what <laughs> I did there ha <laughs> Yes, uh, I would say we should expect to see him because everybody expected to see him on SmackDown. But it, well, the it, song was played clues. during one of the commercial breaks as well. White Rabbit mm -hmm. by uh, uh, Jefferson Starship. Yeah. You know, that song is referring down to uh, Alice in Wonderland, right? Mm -hmm. I Very feel that stuff. Yeah, I feel that. The nature of this, it, it's still just going to be something heavily anticipated, really, you know, just getting everyone excited for that within WWE that they can just continue to, to do these clues. Um, I mean, Extreme Rules is coming up in a few weeks, maybe instead of just more and more clues leading to Extreme Rules, if said person does not appear tonight, um, I would or people, persons, I, I we don't know, we don't know for sure quite exactly um, what this is alluding to or who, excuse me, but I feel that with if the debut does not, or appearance does not take place tonight at Raw, that it, it would be um, the next coming weeks hinting toward who uh, mm -hmm. would be haunted. You know, it's funny because we're talking about rabbit. say said person. Mm -hmm. You know, and because I know you still believe it's Bad Bunny. Wasn't that your pick? <laughs> yes. Okay, my pick was the, the rabbit from uh, the Rosebuds. 
and Adam Rose. Um, <laughs> but, you know, if it's said person that we all think it is, the Eater of Worlds, it's ironic that we're talking about it because the Extreme Rules pay-per-view is coming up in a couple weeks. Do you remember the cinematic match that our friend uh, Adam Shear, otherwise known as Braun Strowman, had with uh, the Eater of Worlds at Extreme Rules a couple years ago? <sighs> Where we started getting an Alexa, you know, to oh. be, you know. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, Alexa as well. Raw. She still has Lily. Yep. And uh, Lily is, you know, matter of fact, we saw um, Asuka holding on to Lily uh, pretty tightly there. That's right. Mm. That is very true. And there's still, you know, isn't that full explanation of why Alexa still has Lily? I mean, she well, was we gone know for why. A bit. I mean, let's, let's, you know, step out of the business. It's because people well, are buying. People are buying it, so it's merchandise. But I mean, in the story context. Yeah, but the point that you mentioned of a of Asuka holding on to Lily tight that that says something right there as well. And while that nine twenty three clue alluded to SmackDown, what we got was another yeah. clue saying, "Hey, it's going to be in Edmonton, and um, Alexa is on Raw." There you go. Okay. Well, let's do something. Hey, let's talk about SmackDown from Friday night and. Uh, we had some really good matches. I mean, I just want to kind of go down everything that we had. First off, uh, you know, we had the Brawling Brutes getting their title shot in the main event uh, against the Usos. We also had the Tribal Chief open up the show. The Bloodline is huge now. They, I mean, in the presentation that they give us on Friday night, it was Roman Reigns. It was the Usos. It was Solo Sokoa. It was the wise man, Paul Heyman, and the honorary Us. I, this, you know, this caught my eye. But I didn't know that it would pay off. I'm glad that I was actually paying attention. Thank you for the White Rabbit stuff in WWE. I'm watching everything now. But uh, I'm like, wow, they all got these new shirts. We the ones. And Sammy's wearing one of the old shirts. Yeah. Oh, Sammy. Didn't, you caught your attention, right? Like, yeah. Sammy, update your shirt game. Yeah. Yeah. Uh... Just the commanding presence as well. I loved seeing them all walking up from the back. I mean, before it was when even when it was just Roman and Paul Heyman, you're like, okay, he's got that presence. And then it right. was Roman and the Usos, and then they added Solo. Well, actually, Sammy was walking out with them before Solo, but now all of them together, oh, that is a true bloodline right there. And must, oh, gosh, Sammy Zayn, so so great. I mean. I, it almost made his me cry. gyrating in the back it kind oh, of just oh, that, drives yes, me wild. Yes, but when Roman was t- when they were tearing his shirt off and taking, oh, I felt so bad for him and even his face. Because oh, you know what it did? They did great camera work on. Is that Jimmy or Jay that doesn't like him? Jay, I think it's Jay. I mean, they really zoomed in on Jay because this was like you know they're sicking the the pit bull after him. This is what Jay's always wanted. Take it off, Sammy. Take it off. And Jimmy's just sitting in the back going, uh, I don't know. Uh, oh. I tell you what, you know what? I almost wanted to cry. But he goes, because I got you a new one. And it's the honorary <laughs> Ooze t-shirt. And he started shaking. Jimmy's just excited. And Jay goes, it's the, whatever. Because, I mean, honestly, it looked like Jay th- didn't know. Like they were going to just beat him down and take the shirt off of him. Yeah. That's some good stuff. But yeah. And then Roman hugging him back and seeing Roman smile. So I'm like, okay, so Roman Usos are technically still heels, right? But everybody's loving them. And now it's Sammy. Sammy's the, I mean, dare I say, the the fan favorite right now. Um, Is Sammy the, the most line. over he's ever been in WWE right now? I think so. Hmm. Think and so. he's a heel, but he's the he's a face on a heel squad, but he's a heel. Yeah. Right? Yes. So hmm. that yeah. But so how does it end? B- book this for me. How does it end? I mean, there's still something there between Sammy and Kevin Owens. And okay. Maybe a tag I, run for them. I know you guys had talked about possibly could it be Sammy and KO that could possibly take the belts from the Usos down the line. Yeah. I'm not sure. I feel <laughs> that Sammy's just going to be on board with the bloodline for for a while to come. I, I think this can well, go Sammy's through... got to be beating out of, beaten out of it. Sammy won't turn on his own. Sammy has yeah. to be thrown out. Yeah. But I think, I mean, I know Kevin Owens is on Raw, but this was as the tag champs can be in both shows, and right. Sammy's from the bloodline, <clears throat> he can be in both too. I think that there's still something there, some unfinished business, um, and something between Jay 
and Sammy that's still unfinished as well. But I think for the time being, they will ride high with Sammy as the honorary oost that can go all the way through Survivor Series and possibly to Rumble. And there's where the match will take place at Mania where Usos can potentially lose those titles. I mean, I, I feel that the Bloodline can hold on to these titles till Mania. Do you feel that they would lose them at Mania with uh, the likelihood of The Rock and Roman being at WrestleMania and that happening there as well? I mean, you know, just beating down the Bloodline all at one show, or does a ah, Roman lose it before takes... the Mania? Yeah, so I know we've discussed it too, where you don't necessarily need to have Roman as champ when he faces The Rock. There's already a story right there. Oh, man. And if the Us- I mean, if the whole bloodline loses all their titles at one period, that that's awful. That's a shot. Mm-hmm. That's, that's a lot. Hard yeah. to come back up from. So maybe not. I mean, that's down the line. I, I I guess I'm just happy that Sammy is officially a part of them. Officially, officially. Officially, officially, he's got a shirt. And to be yeah. honest, the great thing with WWE and the particular marketing of this shirt, everybody can be an honorary oh. Us. Yeah, it does say S to Z on there, but maybe that's It says S-Z at the top, but so what? I mean, it's tiny, but that's what I'm saying. You could all wear it now, and you're an honorary ooze. You know, I don't know what Dave, the Popcorn Night Hero, has got lined up for Blizzard Brawl this year. We had Kishi, and we had uh, Solo uh, at the show, along with Jacob, right? So Solo is Sefa, mm-hmm. right? Yes, yeah, so, and then we yeah. had Jacob, because that's when they did the, the six-man. <laughs> or it was a tag match. I forget what it was, but I'm telling you. The honorary ooses will be in the house. So how many honorary ooses shirts would we see if we had Quiche, you know, at the show this year? It's a hot, hot item right there. Very smart. And, and uh, WWE hasn't brought him in yet, right? But when will we see Kishi possibly as part of that whole thing? Because, I mean, Kishi is not an honorary ooze. He's an ooze. He's bloodline. I mean, and where would he stand? Boy, I mean, we have so many questions that we don't even have answered yet. We could do this thing <laughs> for a couple of years. <laughs> Definitely could. There's a lot within the bloodline, but for right now, happy to see Sammy with him, and it, I think he'll be strong with him for a while. Maybe not all the way or to rumble as I'm, as I'm saying right now, but it, it'll be for a while. It has to be. I'd be shocked if this gets, you know, erased rather quickly. Amazing as long times as those shirts right are now. selling. Yeah. That's gonna keep well, I mean, it. We, we've seen what it happens when merchandise sells. I mean, there's a doll still hanging around on Monday Night Raw. So uh, it's amazing when merchandise sells. All right, let's talk about the rest of the show. We're not going to go match by match because we got a two-hour rampage to get to. Let's talk about, though, Braun Strowman and uh, Alpha Academy. Braun overcoming Otis and just blowing through him. I feel that's how it's going to be for Braun for a while still. I mean, huge return. I, I like that. They didn't necessarily just have him come in and just roll through everybody or have it be enhancement talent or, you know, every week. Yeah. He's got a feud going on with Alpha Academy. Um, it, will it go further? Not really sure. But it's just really showing how much he was missed by the WWE Universe. Oh, yeah. The pop he's and getting. he looks amazing. He looks amazing. Yes. And you haven't noticed. Two huge guys doing their thing in there. It, it was right. great. Tailor the tape. Two, I mean, we both two Wisconsin big guys. Both yeah. too, by the way. That's right. Uh, Otis is from uh, up north there, I think, uh, up at towards the Superior, you know, and it, don't you know? Mm-hmm. Yep, and then remember, Braun, obviously, from the greater, greater southeastern Wisconsin area. I remember, I don't know if it was last year or the year before, where Otis tweeted a picture of him in the Packers striped bibs, just, just saying. That's right, that's how it was. Hey, by the way, congratulations to the Green Bay Packers, 2-0 and now on the NFL mm-hmm. season. That first Absolutely. week loss doesn't count. Uh, uh, beating Tom Brady and the Buccaneers. So uh, great job on that, 14-12. You know, Alan Lazard, we hope you recover quickly. You know, you got to get your fluids in you because we know you lost a bunch on the sideline. Finally, let's talk about uh, the main event, the Brawlin Brutes and the Usos. Usos retain interference uh, by Imperium, looking good in those track suits. Does it keep on going six-man style with Imperium and the Brawlin Brutes? I think so. Um uh, again, unfinished business. That's my term of the morning. Um, we still have Seamus and Luther with their, their feud going on. And I'm enjoying seeing Butch and Ridge Holland as a strong tag team. I was a fan of Imperium when they were on NXT. I mean, it, yeah. we want, you know, it's great to see uh, now Ludwig Kaiser. He was in a, in Ludwig a role where Kaiser. he was almost, you know, hailing to the king, if you will, uh, to Gunther at one point. But now it seems like that light 
I mean, sorry, that situation is gone. Now the light is on him with Giovanni Vinci showcasing their talents as a tag team and how strong they are. I, I, I think it's great. I love both trios and I want to see more of this as well. And they do have something there. Um, we can keep this going, whether it's a six man tag going into extreme rules or if it's Walter, I'm sorry, Gunther and Seamus um, <laughs> on, in their own match. And then Brawl and Roots and um, Imperium, the other. I, every they've been an exciting part of SmackDown for me the, for the past couple of weeks. Like I have to watch every moment of their matches. You know what? And again, uh, something that not because of what you do, but it uh, helps accentuate it. Uh, I listen to the ring announcement of when Imperium comes because she is nailing it. What was the, what's the ring announcer on SmackDown? Samantha again? Urban. She's she great. is killing it because her enunciation on each one of those names. The Intercontinental Champion, Gunther Ludwig von Kaiser. And then she changes it up and goes, Giovanni Vici. <laughs> Killing it. Absolutely. I mean, that actually, it pops me a little bit. It, it's, uh, I absolutely love that. So we're going to have to get you a bunch of uh, foreign sounding names, Linda, have you read them off one day for us. <laughs> I'll have to work on that for you. <laughs> All right. Let's, uh, let's move on over to uh, Rampage. Rampage was taped from Grand Slam in uh, Arthur Ashe Stadium, but it was a two-hour presentation. The first match, Darby Allen and Sting taking on the House of Black, which does not have Malachi Black, and maybe losing another member. Linda? Julia? There's... Or is that your... No, 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 oh. no. There is talk that Buddy is done as well, and uh, oh. maybe moving on from AEW. Buddy Matthews, uh, part of the House of Black. <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, as you can tell, we're a little bit under weather. Linda announcing shows all over the weekend. Me hollering and screaming at the Tampa Green Bay game. So we're a little under the weather Monday morning here. But uh, Darby Allen and Sting taking on the House of Black, which is Brody King and Buddy Matthews with Julia Hart. Really nasty bump. When the great Muda showed up at the end, and then there was that mo uh, move where uh, Sting went off the ropes after he got out of the handcuffs and bumped Julia off the apron into the table. She got barely any table, and I think she got more railing than anything else. I think she got more cement floor. I watched yeah. it back. I think it was actually when Great Muda did the green mist into Buddy Matthews. That's what it was. And, and then green mist into Buddy. Buddy bumped. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and then it 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 was you know she went over the table. It just got like the very end she of it. She missed it. Really, yeah. yeah. She went too far. That's why when Oof. he said that there may not be one less part, I was like, oh no, what else did you hear? Because I really I was like, oh man, I fell for her with that man. Yeah, but, uh, great to see great, great Muda again. Holy yeah. smokes, it's great Muda. Linda, I don't know how uh, invested you are in the character of the great Muda for the last 40 years, but Muda, I mean, they are not lying. Muda and Sting had great matches in the late 80s. Yeah, I'm Muda. glad they touched on that. Like, obviously, you know, the great Muda, I did I see a lot of his stuff growing up. No, but I love, again, just how AEW. It's like Babe really... Ruth coming back. No. Oh. what it is. Yeah. <laughs> But that was, I mean, just to anybody who may not even know of much of the great Muda, just his attire, his presence, that evil look. And I love how it made it seem like he was going to go after Sting and they were really talking about their feuds in the 80s. And yeah. boom, like, is he going to turn on Sting? Sting's cuff? Nope. Helped him out. And it was great to see them I get out in the end. So good stuff. Right First there. time I saw great Muda, obviously, was in WCW. Because, again, mm -hmm. you know, Jim Ross talking about a bunch of matches. Tony talking about a bunch of matches. You know, Great Muda uh, was, I think it was part of the NWO Japan for a long time, too, Ooh. if you remember that from back in the days. But uh, a really small little piece that Jericho gave that I absolutely loved. You know what? We know that's the Great Muda. Look at the way his fingers are moving. I'm like, yeah, the Great Muda does do that. Where he's standing there and his fingers are twitching like he's going to do something. Mm -hmm. Absolutely loved it. Uh, I got goosebumps. Let's talk about the next match. FTW champion Hook and Action Bronson taking on the JAS. Angela Parker and Matt Menard. And Linda, what's my favorite part of wrestling? The music, the entrances. Hook getting himself wrapped in by his tag team partner, Action Bronson. Loved it. Loved it. Yeah. I know you're really looking forward to this match. I know you've I was. You're yeah. growing to love Action Bronson, and I thought he did great. Uh, so what did I hear in the commentary about he might even be close to Grammy nominated? I mean, wow. I, I've never heard his music before. I know he did Hook's song, but dude got in there and worked. And you could see a little bit of athlete in him, too, because uh, he was not getting moved at all. Anytime somebody came at him, boom, you just hit a brick wall, son. Uh, this match was an easy win for Hook and Action Bronson. Yeah. Well, we see more Action Bronson. 
Okay, it was called uh, Word Joe. <laughs> Word Low and Samoa Joe. <laughs> Taking on the technical bees, Josh Woods and Tony Nice with smart Mark Sterling. And a powerbomb symphony was about to happen for Mark Sterling because this was a crush match. Yeah. Yeah, but you know, great to see the chemistry between War Joe. I had to make sure I get that right. Um, I think down the line, though, I mean, the, them both being title holders, that we got to get a match between the two of them. Yeah, I'd love it to see it. I mean, because you know what? What we don't probably know about Ward, though, is he could probably wrestle. He's not just a big muscle meathead, you know what I mean? I bet you he can wrestle as well. Yeah. Yeah, and has more than the symphony. I mean, right. we know that, but I, it would be great to see some more of that showcase. Because for most of what we know of him on AEW and right. in pro wrestling in general, he was, you know, helping out MJF for a while. They're not really getting showcases much. Think about that for a second. AEW really does have a bunch of homegrown talent that we had never heard or seen of before that they've been bringing up for the last three years. Yeah. MJF, I mean, on a national scene, again, if you watched, I think it was Pro Wrestling Guerrilla and a couple other places that MJF was in, MLW, I think he was in, uh, national audiences didn't really know who MJF was. Now we have MJF, we've got Warlow, we've got guys like, you know, Jungle Boy Jack Perry, who we're going to yeah. talk about now. Uh, taking Darby the Allen. Fitness. Darby Allen, uh, I mean, all of these guys, Scorpio Sky, I had never heard of before until Daniel Zan Kazarian had him with him. So again... AEW has really brought a ton of talent with them. Britt Baker, never heard of him before. I mean, I, I knew there was a dentist out there somewhere named, you know, Britt Baker, DMD, but apparently she's a wrestler too. <laughs> Let's talk Jungle Boy, Jack Perry against Ray Phoenix with Alex Abrahantis. And uh, this was a match that we could see in another five, 10 years, honestly, for a big belt. I really love this match. Yeah, you knew you were going to get a great match between the two of them and um, just Great to see Jungle Boy back in full jungle form, <laughs> I guess. You know, just like, uh, out of jungle clothes. form. Yes. Uh, yeah, fan of Lucha Brothers as well, which on a random side note, we were talking about um, names from other countries. I did get to say Penta Cero Miero that I worked on really hard for two <laughs> shows earlier this year with um, when there I were the remember. two BTW, yeah. GLCW shows. I digress. I thought of him doing Lucha Brothers. Uh, Ray Phoenix, So, um, But anywho. Say Phoenix or Phoenix? Phoenix. Okay, I was just wondering because I mean they'll obviously tell you what the enunciation should be. So, yeah, I would have thought Phoenix, but they always say Phoenix. Um, you know what okay. I hear in AEW, and then from what I learned from my Spanish class, is the vowels. It's A A E O U. So if it's an E, it's Fe or A. Okay. So Phoenix. Perfect. No, thank you, and welcome <laughs> awesome. back to class. <laughs> That's absolutely. Uh, let's talk about the finish of this match. Uh, signature win for Jungle Boy Jack Perry. Now Christian Cage's music hits. Uh, Luchasaurus tries to blindside Jungle Boy, but he saw him in the nick of time, but therefore Luchasaurus planted Jungle Boy with all the force. And uh, Cage saying that he jumped, uh, Jungle Boy jumped him like a coward, and he still beat him. Oh, Christian Cage. Still that attire. You gotta love it. He's just doing his thing. Like, he's just so good as this monster. He's heel. a douche. Yeah, he's a douche heel. So. And I say monster, I obviously don't mean like. Like Luchasaurus monster. Right. I just mean just like that's a, his right hand is what he calls it. That's his deal. right hand. Mm -hmm. Hey, this one had a lot of heat to it. The Mad King, Eddie Kingston, and Sammy Guevara. And I've been struggling. I always want to say Tay Mello. It's Ty Mello. And uh, again, the uh, PDA on the stage. <laughs> I think he she I think Sammy took that last sesame seed from the big Mac she had oh, right beforehand. Goodness. Took it right out of the teeth. That's how deep he got in there. Um this was a Eddie Kingston win, but would not release the whole after the match. The whole effing show, or what was Jerry Lynn's nickname at ECW? Because Rob Van Dam was the whole effing show. Uh, Jerry Lynn had something to play uh, off of that. It was something super close. Uh, super close. Sure. Yeah, I don't know. But Jerry Lynn, uh, an official now in uh, AEW. This is just the difference between WWE and um, AEW. When we see officials, how are the officials in WWE dressed when they come down to the ring? Suit and tie or just blazer? It was just... They look like officials, like they're office people. This is nothing against Jerry Lynn or the company. He came down in a polo and cargo shorts. That's the <sighs> difference in companies right there. Nothing personal. I mean, maybe AEW is more my style, but I'm just telling you, professional is professional. 
So AEW senior official Paul Turner reverses the decision because Eddie Kingston would not release his hold on Sammy, and Sammy technically gets the win. <laughs> I, I thought we were going to see a, a much crazier moment there uh, yeah. from Eddie, but instead we got Sammy. Um, I, I, I will say there was some funny moments there too. Him asking Ty, "Where am I? Where am I?" And him just being like, Rrr, "You know, <laughs> that that was that was good though." But um, that. Great to see Eddie Kingston back in there. And, you know, technically he did beat Sammy. So that's great for Eddie. I know yeah. it's not going to be a win in technically in the, in the record column there. But because um, remember, wins and losses matter at AEW. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let's talk. Let's talk the TBS title match. Jade Cargo with the baddies and Diamante with Trina. Trina turns on Diamante. Jade Cargo still undefeated. And I don't know when she's going to lose her belt. And if she loses her belt, we're going to notice. I know you and Matthew touched on this a lot last week. Mm -hmm. Uh, Yeah, it is crazy because she hasn't. I I think Matthew's opinion was, yeah, Matthew's opinion was she's in her own division. Division she is because you don't have Britt Baker and Jade Cargill facing one another. You don't have Chris Statlander and Britt Baker. I'm sorry, and um, Jade Cargill facing one another. Mm -hmm. Um. I don't know. I mean, she's is she already on forty and oh now? I know she's recently thirty something. Maybe it's the fifty and oh that it's like what it's like when she gets into some with like Hikaru Shida or something. Like I, I'm just thinking yeah. of or is this TBS championship like the women's nothing was against like the Intercontinental or Mid Atlantic title, but the women's European championship. Yeah. It's like the not second tier. Necessarily, you're trying not to of. say lower level is what you're trying not to say. It's a, it's a, it's still a champion, but the step right. after the, the big one. <laughs> right. Right. Is this their second tier women's championship is what you're saying. And I got you. Uh, like I said, Trina smacked Diamante. I lined herself with Jada and the baddies. And eh. let's talk about the grand slam golden ticket battle Royal. Then I got a problem with this match. I liked it, but I got a problem. In any kind of battle royal, they always tell us that uh, you're only eliminated when both feet touch the floor. That dumb ramp was on one side of the ring. So, again, maybe I just missed it because I was kind of blah on the match, even though I did like the match. Did anybody land on the ro- uh, on the ramp and not get eliminated? So if they touch the ramp, are they eliminated? Because they didn't actually touch the floor. I'm confused. I guess I'll have to go back and see if, they did show Justin Roberts reading the rules because, yes, I have read off the rules for a battle royal before. And, yes, you do say, you know, you have to be eliminated both with both feet touching touch the floor. The floor. Yeah. Right. Uh, if he says or ramp um, for this particular case, maybe we missed that. Or if someone did get thrown in there, did, did that save them? Did they were they the other? And I'll have know. to look back to that because I, I guess I the eliminations were just happening everywhere and i noticed it happening on the floor so i guess it didn't even like and here's what really got me so the match starts off with hangman page getting jumped from behind by roosh the blade and the butcher the dark order came to the aid of page so they're all just running towards the ring to start the battle royal so the battle royal half of the damn thing was outside the ring well uh, come on and maybe it was a short on time we're gonna change the rules one more time the first 10 men in the battle royal We'll just go and I didn't even get the chance to pop over one of your favorite guys being in the match. Did you see him? I didn't see the boys, but I saw but, Dalton Castle. Well, they, they did help save him at one point. Okay, so maybe I missed it, too, because I was still upset about the ramp. I don't know. <laughs> it was not <laughs> Brian, on the ramp side, but at yeah, one point... Brian Cage was in the it. match, too. Where's yeah. Brian Cage been? Who oh, better than Cage? Uh, the winner of the match... Hangman Adam Page, and he gets a title shot, apparently, according to Shivani, in Cincinnati at the next show. Yes, I'm sorry. My mind just went another way since you said Brian Cage is back, and then Adam Page won. And I was like, well, we saw Kristen Cage, and now we have the right. woman formerly known as Page right. at AEW. Right, uh, exactly. Page Cage versus Cage and Page with Page as the referee. We talked about that. And Diamond Dallas Page. That's somewhere. right, as the ring announcer. That's right. We could also call Metallica to play him in, you know, or Bob Seger, either way. Turn the page. Yes. Okay. But yes. Oh, so. my way. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so I, I, I guess I, I didn't realize the winner of this was going to get their title shot already next week. But now, you know, in Cincinnati, 
Skyline Chili might get mentioned once again. It always Ooh. does every time they're there, which, by the way, I did stop at Skyline Chili on it's, their way back. All right, Linda, again, I got to ask you, because you've had both, Skyline or Real? I prefer Real, although, yeah. although uh, I know many others who prefer Skyline. So it's Because so, you've got your toes in both waters, right? You know, you're down mm-hmm. in the Ville, so Skyline's down there. Or, you know, even if you're driving through Cincinnati. What about the others? You know, say the OV Dub people that I'll stop by. Do they prefer Skyline even though they've been to Milwaukee and have had real chili? I don't. I think this is a, a time for me to take a field trip with the boys next time they're up. Take them to some real chili and show them the, the Milwaukee chili style. But which And make sure to let them know, too, it was there first. Oh, yes. I'll let you know. I'll let them know that. There you go. I think that's a time from uh, the man who called me to come down and get some real chili as well. Mm-hmm. All right. Let's talk to main event. Uh, lights out. Powerhouse, uh, Powerhouse Hobbs and absolute Ricky Starks. The only issue I had with this match, which was amazing. How, uh, how heavy do you think Ricky Starks is? What does Ricky weigh? 200, maybe? Tops? 190? I would say about there. What do you think Hobbs weighs? 250, 275. They mentioned him being, it was like 270 or something like that. Should Ricky Starks be spearing Hobbs? Well, it was a way to get him down. I mean, I understand. I'm just saying, if we're to suspend disbelief, Starks speared Hobbs through a table before Hobbs could use the lights. Uh, even him running at full speed, Ricky doesn't have enough mass to him that he should be putting Hobbs through anything. Well, Hobbs was already a little wobbly. And... It'd be like Rey Mysterio spearing the Big Show. Or the Big Show should just brush him off like a gnat. I, I don't think the size of it is too, too much. Maybe this is me thinking, coming into my size, I'm trying to spear someone. If they're if I can get them down, now it gets me thinking, but I think that it was great that Ricky Starks got the victory, considering the last time we saw the two of them, it wasn't a long match. I know this lights out, and, you know, obviously a lot of shenanigans in the match, but great to see him getting that win on top of Will Hobbs. All righty. Glad to see he got the win. (laughs) He finished off Hobbs with the Rochambeau and the pin. Linda, tonight, the coordinates from the last QR code say that we're further down the rabbit hole. Do we see Ray Wyatt tonight, or do we get more clues? I think it's more clues. And I'm okay with that because, you know, we, we kind of psyched ourselves in to seeing uh, Bray Wyatt on Friday. And then when we didn't get it, normally we would be upset. Oh, they set us up and now they pulled out. I'm okay. Give me more clues. Give me more videos. Right. I think, I mean, I think it's just a guarantee that he will be there. I mean, the Extreme Rules Flyers does have hidden fireflies and kind of see a lantern in the background. I mean, it's, mm-hmm. it's, it's all in front of you. It's all in front say. of me. We say, yep, we always say that. It's always been right in front of us the whole time. So right in front of us is tomorrow, Tuesday morning. It'll be yourself and myself again, right? We'll talk yes. about Raw and see what happens. And then Matthew will be joining us on Wednesday morning. So for Matthew Thomas, for Linda Kay, the man they called me to, thanks for stopping by. We'll talk to you guys tomorrow morning. So long, everyone. <laughs>